Hello Rugby League fans and welcome to this, the first in a series of videos for Love Rugby League, this entitled Rugby League Shorts. So what have I got coming up in this particular episode? Well, to be honest, it's all about resolutions. We're at that time of year. Happy New Year to everybody, by the way. As far as I'm uh, filming this, it's just inside January 2018, and I'm really pleased to have your company. As you can see, slightly different surroundings. Got myself a bit of a, uh, a studio set up going now, and hopefully we can make this and put it to some good use in the forthcoming year. So, Rugby League 2018. What would I like to see? Well, first of all, clubs outside Super Leagues to arrange their own TV deals, stroke media deals. I feel that in light of Sky, only showing championship games when it's a summer bash, that championship and League One clubs should be able to arrange their own television deals. It's worked in the past for Celtic Crusaders and for Toronto, and forward-thinking championship clubs could really make a go of their in-house TV channels. I'm thinking the likes of, you've got Lee Centurions, who have Lee Centurions TV. You've got Featherstone Rovers with Rovers TV. You've got Halifax with Halifax Player Pro. And uh, there's a couple of others as well. Swinton are also uh, really pushing hard on that social media and uh, video front. Uh, similar to like what we're doing as well through Love Rugby League. So I'd love to see more of that. And I'd love to see more of it becoming available so that's the first thing now on the field uh regular viewers will know that i've got a bit of a bugbear regarding overseas halfbacks but before we do anything about that whatsoever i'd love to see the 10 meter line rule as it stands at the moment so 10 meters between when the player is playing the ball and when the defense is meeting them i'd like to see that changed and how i'd like to see that changed is reduced to five meters like it was during my days when i first started watching the sport I can't help but think this extra space that we have at the moment increases the impact of tackles and potentially causes more injuries over the course of a season. Uh, as you know, I've got my frustrations regarding this halfback play. And it's halfback play generally as well, to be honest. I would love to see a lot more decisions being made at the line, committing defenders, etc., etc. A closer defensive line would mean that a halfback would have to think more about the type of pass that they make and just how they come into the game. As a result, we might even see forwards begin to pass to try and gain an advantage rather than the bash and barge mentality which we've got at this moment in time. So that's another thing that I'd love to see change in 2018 in Rugby League. The third aspect that I would love to see is no signing of a professional player before the age of 19 unless there's exceptional circumstances. So players that are playing maybe an age group, two age groups above and they're doing extremely well. Young players, I feel, should be allowed to stay with their amateur clubs until the age of 19. This way, players would get the opportunity to step up and play against men a lot earlier than they do at this moment in time. Too often we see players that go through scholarships, for example, they don't get signed, and then at the end, they end up walking away from the game. And I think a lot of this could be avoided, and I hope that uh, in, in doing this, and somebody listens somewhere to this anyway. Um, having had far more involvement in the amateur game over the last 12 to 18 months, I feel that it's at the amateur clubs where it's the best place for a player to develop and continue rather than at the professional clubs who have a habit of hoovering up all the talent. And as a result, more young players will be left in the amateur game testing themselves against men. Allied with this, I would also love to see professional clubs and the RFL putting more time and resources into developing coaching and coaches in their area. In theory, the better the coach or the mentor, the more attuned players become. And as a result, everyone improves. So you don't just get those at the top being creamed off and heading off to the professional ranks. You get the whole game. And I think that we should be looking more on the whole game to uh, to, to really look at and, and get this get this thing going. Uh, I'd love to see a change in focus, even being totally honest. Uh, the next one that I have would be I'd do away with under-19s rugby in the pro ranks altogether, as instead reinstate open age reserves. Yes, teams could still be able to run younger teams. They could have uh, as many players as they wanted under the age of 20, for example, uh, because what we're saying is that uh, they're able to sign them from 19. Um, 
but I would I would also do this as a means of meaning that everybody in a squad of players gets to play some meaningful rugby every single week of the season. I was brought up on a staple of Tuesday and Thursday night games in the old A-team leagues. And I have to admit, I'd really love to see these return. Uh, for me, this would save younger players being kept in a bubble and they'd continue to learn and there would be a proper standard where squad players not selected in the first 17 could still play regularly. As a result, fingers crossed, it would bring an end to the dual registration system and that's definitely on my wish list, even if some teams have benefited in the short term. If that wasn't possible and dual reg has to remain on the table, I would make it a rule that any players that are put out to an alternate club are there for at least three months. This would mean continuity for all concerned. We've seen it in the past, haven't we? Where a player's gone from pillar to post. They played for a long club one week, another club another. Heck, I think Lewis Foster, I did an article on Love Rugby League in the middle of last season. He played for four clubs over the case of the season. Uh, and that's just too much mixing and matching about, to be honest. Um, there were other players as well who donned on three, maybe four jerseys over the course of the season. They must have been absolutely dizzy. Can't believe it. Last but by no means least, and I think possibly this is the most important of the lot, I'd love to see more money being fed back to the grassroots of the sport. So another change I would make would be professional clubs having to pay more to the amateur clubs that they're signing young players off. Ideally, in addition to this, I would also set up something of a, a grassroots fund as well, where so much of a club's um, gate receipts maybe gets put forward and is utilised in the local game. Um, so, for example, you know, being a Lee fan, maybe one percent of the gate money that is raised over the course of the season, or, or a segment, even if it's even if it's one percent, if it's two percent, or whatever, and that is then fed off and split between. In this case, it would be Lee Miners and uh, Lee East. Uh, to so, because I think you get more bang from your book from the amateur clubs. They're creating the players, they're formulating them, aren't they? They're putting them through the paces. I also think as well that kids deserve the best facilities available, in addition to the best coaching. And also as well, teams that are invited into the Challenge Cup, they should be entitled to the same prize money as professional teams. In some cases, I think it would go a long way towards assisting with travel costs and also generally improving the club as well. Those are my thoughts. What do you reckon? Let me know in the boxes below and you can also share this video. Thanks for joining me. This is Dave Parkinson signing off on Rugby League Shorts.